Hey everybody, welcome to the Al's Nest Barbecue Show. Wednesday night, 7 o'clock here in Ottawa, Tennessee. We're brought to you by Butcher Barbecue and the complete line of Butcher Barbecue products. Grilling oils, sauces, rubs, containers, twine. If you need it for barbecue, by golly, Butcher Barbecue products has it available at the Al's Nest Barbecue Store in Udawar, also brought to you by the most popular drum smoker in America, the Pit Barrel Cooker. Stop by the Owl's Nest Barbecue Supply Store and you will see the Pit Barrel Cooker displayed prominently right up front. Come on in. If you have questions, I'll show you how to use it. It's easy, folks. If I can use it, you can use it. If I can use it successfully, you can use it successfully, I promise. The Pit Barrel Cooker available at the Barbecue Supply, Owl's Nest Barbecue Supply Store in Ottawa. We're also brought to you by Michelin Tires. At, available at the Midnight Oil in Ottawa, right next to the Barbecue Supply Store. Isn't that ironic? And right now, going on right now, Michelin Tires have a $100 rebate going on. All tires are on sale. And folks, this just isn't for... The, my friends and the local people here in Ottawa, Chattanooga area. No, no, no. This is nationwide. Nationwide. So if you're listening in Nashville, you could be listening in Washington State. You could be listening in Hawaii, in Guam. You can buy Michelin tires right now on sale at your Michelin dealer, like I am, and get a $100 rebate from Michelin tires. It's a great deal. You can't beat it. Michelin Tires, you know you want them. They're the best that there are. Hey, make sure you follow the Owl's Nest Barbecue uh, show and the Owl's Nest Barbecue competition team here on Facebook. For all the upcoming shows and guests and special event announcements, go to Owl's Nest Barbecue and like us. Follow Owl's Nest Barbecue on Instagram for pictures and videos of barbecue and other interesting things that the team and myself, we put up there. Uh, like wood-fired pizza. We've been getting into some wood-fired pizza lately, and uh, we've been posting some pictures of that, and that's kind of fun too, so you'll enjoy that. You never know what you're going to see. Um, real quick before we get to our guest tonight, here's a contest update. we got a couple local contests coming up. Now, we've been talking about them for a while. On September the 14th, the Blue and Gray Barbecue Contest in Chickamauga, Georgia is going on. It's a great contest. It's on the grounds of the Gordon Lee Mansion with all kinds of family, family activities going on. Al's Nest Barbecue will be there. And you can go to friendsofthegordonleemansion.com, friendsofthegordonleemansion.com to get the sign-up form if you want to be in the barbecue contest. I think registration is only $100. You get water and you get power, too. It's a good little contest. It's not sanctioned by anybody. But it's a lot of fun. You'll be turning in pork butt, ribs, and chicken. We've done it several times. It's it's a great little contest. Great for the family. And if you're just a beginning, you know, barbecue person and you want to get into competition barbecue, this is a good place to go. Also, on September 21st, the following weekend, uh, up at the Meigs County Fairgrounds, the Smokeout for Aut the Smokeout Autism Barbecue event will be going on. This is going to be another great little contest. Now, at this contest teams will be turning in all four meats and those are brisket pork butt pork ribs and chicken so that's going to be a that'll be a a real test of barbecue talent go to the back road barbecue boys facebook page for all the information and links to sign up on that and um, don't forget the owl's nest barbecue supply store right here in Ottawa. we have the complete line of butcher barbecue rubs grilling oils and sauces plus we carry the pit barrel cooker the most popular smokers around and with a price point of $299. That's right, only $299. Everything in the pit barrel cooker box is in there for you to be successful cooking. You don't have to put it together. You have to put the top handle on it, two bolts, that's it, and then you're cooking. Come on by and I'll even show you how to use it. Be glad to do that too. All right, got all that housekeeping taken. Thanks for joining us, everybody. We appreciate everybody that joins us here on Wednesday nights. It's a lot of fun. We hope we give out a lot of information. And uh, if uh, you ever want to contact us, my uh, email address 
is Steve Ray at S R M O dot U S. Steve Ray at S R M O dot U S. S R M O, the easy way to remember that is Steve Ray at Steve Ray Midnight Oil, S R M O dot U S. And I'll be glad to entertain any emails that we get. If you have any questions or comments about the show, please send them to us. All right, what we're going to do now. We are going to go hide behind the screen real quick, and we're going to bring in from the Michelin Tire Guest of the Week, the purveyor of one of the most popular barbecue supply online stores in the southeastern United States. Let me find that. Go right there. There he is. From rubs to sauces to supplies and know-how. No one can match our guest, Brian Jarvis. Hang on, Brian. I'm going to get you wrecked back up here, buddy. And there he is, just like magic, the owner of the Atlanta Barbecue Store, Brian Jarvis. Brian, how are you today? I'm good, Steve. How are you doing? Man, thank you so much for joining us. You know, um, Brian, Brian, if everybody watching and listening, Brian is a a true entrepreneur. I, um, I saw Brian... Uh, Brian also does a, a video podcast uh, from his home on, I think it's Sunday and Monday nights, Brian? Yes, correct. We do a show on Sunday nights, which is a pretty much an Atlanta barbecue store uh, show. And then Monday nights, we do Chewing the Barbecue Fat uh, my, with myself and Robert with Smoke Me Silly. We both do that on uh, Monday nights at 9 o'clock. And uh, they've, got a great, they've got a great show. They've also got great barbecue competition. And uh, that's how I found Brian. Of course, I've I've heard of the Atlanta Barbecue Store forever and ever, and uh, it was such a neat show, Brian. And y'all were looked like y'all were having such a good time, and the knowledge yeah. the knowledge that you guys were. Uh, I mean, you can tell when somebody you know talks the language. I, I was just really impressed. I wanted to get you on the show to talk about the Atlanta Barbecue Store online. I know you've owned it for all about oh a couple years, I guess now. What um what made you want to get into the online barbecue supply because it's a uh, highly competitive area. But uh, if you find a good site, it's, it's you can really build a good customer base, I believe. Yeah, correct. So uh, we, I've been cooking barbecue for probably eight years now, um, seven or eight years. And uh, one of my good friends, Randy Boswell, owned the barbecue store, Atlanta Barbecue Store. And uh, we would go back and forth talking about things and um, just talk about business and this and th this and that. And um, and he got to the point to where he was ready to come out of the uh, store and, and he was moving out of barbecue, getting back into the ministry. Um, and he called me and asked if I wanted if I was interested. Um, and my wife, we have three kids and she was ready to have something different to do. Um, and so we I, I, we talked about it. I said, Ellen, let's let's jump in and see what we can do. We love barbecue. We love competition barbecue. Um, it's great people, and we just decided to jump in feet first, and uh, and here we are today. Um, it's been almost two years, a little over a year and a half. Um, we've got a store, we an online store. Our presence is growing, um, mm -hmm. and we're doing the best we can. We're trying to have the best quality service, uh, the best products that we can get. Um, we don't have all of them. There's a lot of them out there, but we try and have what Ugh. everything that we have. You can win. You could go out and win a barbecue competition um, any given week. So we feel like we have all the all the right products. We're we're bringing in new products almost weekly now, um, and and we're just trying to go from there. Hey, I know. Um, let's uh, let's give our friend David Bosco some um, love on, oh, here yeah. on the on the uh, show tonight. I know that um, the Atlanta Barbecue Store y'all y'all feature David's products as I do mm -hmm. at my store. Um, is it is is he not the, the one of the, the the nicest people to do business with, and the, one of the most professional people that you've ever met? He really is. I mean, he was one of the first people we talked to when we got into this store. Um, we called and asked him for some advice, and you know, just a down a down to earth guy. I mean, we were sitting there. I'm thinking that butcher. You know, that he's he's butcher, and he's not going to talk to us. But I mean, he's down to earth. We I mean, we yeah. talk to him now on a daily basis, and um, my wife does more than I do. Um, but just a great guy, great products. I mean, the products, they're some of our best selling products and I mean, and they are, they are quality products. I just want um, to interrupt you real quick. Our, your good friend, Paul Keltner just joined in 
the conversation yeah. on uh, Facebook. We'll talk about that story in a little bit. But go on with David. Great he, guy. He, yeah. yeah, the butcher, I mean, he's just a wonderful dude. I mean, a great cook. And, the, and what I like about the thing that we found out about barbecue is everybody's so friendly and nice, and they're willing to help in any way. Um, so if we ever have any issues with some of the products, we can call them and, and, you know, talk to them and they're, and they're there to fix it or, you know, take our input and see if they can't make their products better. Um, and that's something that's been, it's been really good to see. And, and like I said, David's just a great guy. You can pick up a phone and call him and he's going to answer and answer any question you have. Um, one of my good friends, uh, Gary Chastain with Hold Your Horses, um, I was talking to him Monday and he asked some questions about it. And I was, and I, he's like, I'm just going to call, I'm going to call David tomorrow. And, yeah. and, and he did, and he got the answer and he got everything taken care of. So I mean, it's just the kind of guy he is. Um, just an incredible guy. You know, Great I've talk, products. I've too. talked with him so often. I know his schedule. He goes, first thing he does on, uh, in the morning, he goes to some little, uh, coffee shop there in Chandler, <laughs> Oklahoma. <laughs> and you can always catch him first thing in the morning when he's in yeah. there talking to his buddies. So, uh, but he is very accessible and, um, you know, he's really, uh, he's really stepped up his game in shipping and, mm -hmm. uh, he's very, very fast now on shipping. And what I like about it, and, uh, you'll see if you ever come into my store, when you go on, uh, Brian's online store, the butcher barbecue, the range of products that he has is, is really incredible. Um, yeah. and you know, and it seems like every new one that he introduces Brian, wins a major competition like last year he won the jack daniels invitational with that grilling addiction that he'd added to the line and he'd put that he put that flavor profile on every meat that he turned in and he walked away with the win so uh you know obviously those that 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 rub at my store i know flies off the shelf and i'm sure it's a big order item for you at, at the uh, atlanta barbecue store yeah, that's a great product. Another thing is he had those three sauces that he came out with. He already had mm -hmm. some sauces, and then he, you know, he waited and he used the sauces, and he won the jack. I think he did really well at the royal, and he used the uh, and he used those sauces, and then he came out and developed and, and released the sauces, and they've been really good sellers for us also. Yeah, and uh, what other lines, but other than David, do you carry? Because there's so many, you know, Davids are oh, great, man. but there's so many good ones out there. Uh, I'm sure. You, are you carrying Meat Church yet? I don't have meat church yet. That's one that we've uh, that we're really thinking about adding. Um, we've been very. I mean, it's hard to add all the different uh, the rubs and spices out there right now. Yeah. Because um, there's so many, but that's one that we really want to get on the store. Um, but I mean, some we've got. You know, we've got Semdocs. We've got Cosmos. We've got Smoking Guns. We've got Triple Nine. We've got. I mean, we, man, I could go out there. Some of the biggest sellers we've had here lately are. Uh, a lot of the rubs out of Texas. Um, these Texas um, products are just really taking off right now. Um, some of the La Babacoa stuff and the uh, Texas Oil Dust products, um, they're really hot right now, and they are doing really well. Um, are, so. they, are they used on – is it because – let me ask you this, Brian. Is it because brisket has become such a popular meat again to cook, not only in Texas but all over the – I know – in the southeast, it is really gaining a, a lot of uh, footing uh, for, of cooks. I know I've I, I had my summer of brisket that I'm just wrapping up. Where I, I think I cooked, I counted up. I believe I cooked over 55 briskets this summer so far, and uh, wow. just well, I just I just love cooking them. It's just my, you know, as Mo K. San says, it's my it's my meat zen. I, I just really <laughs> love it. Is you think that's maybe the reason why it's so popular? Well, yeah, I mean, it is. And I, and I believe, I mean, there's more than just uh, brisket. I mean, they have products. I mean, I use one of their products on uh, chicken. Uh, a barnyard Pimp is a product that I use for uh, chicken. Um, it's a Texas oil dust product. Uh, um, and then a lot of different injections and <clears throat> brine, <clears throat> excuse me, brines are coming out of there. Uh, so it's, I don't know. <clears throat> I think what we're seeing is, is we're just trying to step outside the box a little bit and and find what are other really good high quality products um, that people can use and score well with on the competition trail. Um, most of our products that we carry are going to um, really focus in on that, on the competition cook. Um, we haven't really hit the market yet for the backyard cook, um, your, your at home guy. Um, 
majority of our products have MSG in them and they, you know, phosphates. And that's the kind of stuff that really gives it a, a kick and a, and a, and a, the wow factor that we're looking for in our meat. So, um, that, I mean, but yeah, I mean, I guess that's some of the newer stuff. And so if you haven't tried the La Barbacoa, um, it's the Cow Whisperer and the Tejas Q Candy. Those are the two rubs that they have. Uh, that's definitely a, a great, um, two great products that are out now. Um, and then we also have the, like I said, the Texas oil dust products out of Texas, um, that whole line coming in. So, and another new product that we have, um, and, and you can tell me if I need to change um, topics, but. No, you're doing uh, great, man. The Fire Dancer rubs, Eric Lee's Fire Dancer rubs. Um, he just came out with three rubs. He had the pork rub. Um, he's just come out with the chicken rub that's really scoring well. Um, and then he's got the, his new SOB PG. Um, it's a salt, salt, pepper, garlic, uh, rub that's really taken off. Um, Eric's a great guy. Um, we're going to have him on one of our shows in a couple of weeks. Um, but I see Joe LaPlante said he loves Heath Riles and Heath Riles is another, um, really, really popular line that we have. Um, he's got a lot of different, uh, to choose from. Um, and that's, and that's another one. So yeah, we got Heath Riles also and. You know, I called Heath today, talking about good guys like David. Um, I called Heath today. I asked him. I was asking him about an MBN question, and uh, he didn't hesitate to give me any answers. So it was really, it was really cool yeah. to see. Yeah, he's a nice fellow. I was at a competition he was at one time, and he was building turning boxes for people. Wow. <laughs> I mean, he's that kind of guy. I he put, is. I put a brisket in mine. I said, "Would you cook this?" <laughs> <laughs> there you go he, he would there you go he built the box oh um, man you know you talk you talk about the uh competition cook versus the uh backyard cook i kind of geared my I, I don't have an online side i just got a walk-in a walk-in store mm -hmm. i i have really been catering to the uh, backyard cook um uh, trying to encourage people to you know take the dive uh, i sell the pit barrel cooker brian mm -hmm. because it, it is a very inexpensive vessel to learn on um it, it, it cooks a great product and it, you know, there's people that use them at, at competitions. I know when I do my competition, I use it to do my ribs with, um, the, the barrel, the barrels are, are sweeping the nation. It seems like everybody's coming out with a barrel now. And, um, and, and I encourage people to come in and ask questions. Don't, don't you think that that is a, a market that is really waiting to be be tapped because I know, I know there are, and I don't know about your area, you can address this too, but in our area, all the ACE hardwares have really started marketing mm -hmm. aggressively uh, smokers, uh, eggs. Uh, one of our, uh, one of our ACE hardwares here in town have taken on the Myron Mixon smokers and they are really aggressive in their marketing and they're not marketing to competition people. They're marketing to the backyard cook. And, and that's where I kind of like to spend my energy. Well, well, what do you think an online store can do? And what, what, what are you going to try to do? Because I know you, I know it's in the back of your mind because that's just that much more business that, that you can get. Yeah. I mean, I mean, speaking of Ace Hardware, Ace, uh, you know, we're in the, down here in Georgia um, and the GBC is, is the Georgia barbecue championship is, um, is one of the points chases that we had on here. And Ace is the, they're the title sponsor for mm -hmm. the GBC. Um, so they really are digging in into the, into the barbecue, uh, to the competition barbecue side of things. Um, they know that if they can get the competition guys um, all, out there, it's going to only help um, bring in more backyards uh, yeah, to their, to exactly. their stores. Um, and, and going with your, the, the pit barrels, um, uh, barrel smokers are awesome. I mean, they're 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 great cookers. Um, I know I know they're a rib cook. I think you're saying you cook ribs on them, and they're just amazing cookers. Um, and they they offer that flavor that you just can't get anywhere else. So um, you're well, seeing I'm a lot of you drums. said that. I'm glad I'm glad you said that because I always forget to bring that out. And it does the the pit barrel the pit barrel cooker and all all barrel cookers deliver a more uh, authentic barbecue taste than a lot of the offsets and a lot of the, uh, gravity feed smokers. I think they do. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're, they're just different. You know, I mean, that's, I think that's why you see so many different competition cooks with different smokers out there. Um, you've got, I mean, 
you'll see people with jambos that also have a have a, another barrel cooker beside them. Mm-hmm. Um, and and it's just there's so many different flavor profiles out there right now that you can come up with. Um, and that, I think that's what makes all there's so many good cooks out there right now. Uh, because everybody's trying everything. I mean, we're not just trying to um, take a class necessarily, take a class and then kind of just go cook a recipe. I mean, you're seeing more and more people um, wanting to learn the art of cooking. Um, and, we, and we see it all the time. We get phone calls all the time asking, you know, what, 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 what are different rubs that you have that can complement whatever? And, and that's our job is to be able to help them with that. And, and we're doing a decent job, we think. Um, but, I, I mean, but back to your Ace Hardware thing, um, I think it's awesome seeing so many different people getting into cooking. Um, I have people ask me all the time, what kind of what kind of cooker should I get? What's what, this, that, and the other? Should I get a pellet grill? Should I get a drum? Should I get yeah. an offset? Should I get... And, and I say just get whatever you're going to cook on. Um, if you have time, go with something else. I mean, it, it's, up, it's up to you. Whatever you like is what you need to be cooking on. Um, pellets, pellet smokers are awesome smokers. They're, you know, they're, they're good. You can hit a button and you're going to get, you're going to get good. It's going to be a good flavor. Uh, uh, cans, barrels, whatever. They're, they're good. Um, it's just whatever you feel like you have the time and whatever you're going to cook on, um, is what I tell people all the time to jump on and, uh, and do because that's what makes this all about is cooking, getting out yeah. there and cooking. The, the only thing I, uh, the only thing I, um, and I'm not going to say concerns because it doesn't concern me. I just, I wonder about is the um, when people are getting into barbecue, especially the backyard. I know a lot of people around here, and I know Atlanta is definitely big green egg country where you live, mm-hmm. where you're from. Um, so many times you go over somebody's house, there's a green egg sitting in the corner of the deck, and you can tell it hasn't been used in two years and it's more of a uh it's more of a trophy you know yeah i've got yeah. a big green egg and then you know sitting next to it's a uh, a char grill gas grill and you can tell that's the one that's being used all the time not the green egg um and, and i think i think part of the part of the situation is not to throw off on an egg because they're they're wonderful vessels and they, they cook fantastic but they're a little they're a little bit uh, the learning curve on those things is a little bit higher and I think people get frustrated because they can't, they don't want to learn to control a fire. They'd rather have, they'd rather have a pellet cooker where they can just dump pellets in there, and you know set the set the temperature at 275, throw a pork butt on it, and grab the golf clubs, and uh, you know head out to the golf course. And when they come back, you know they think they've got a, a great tasting uh, pork butt. Is, it, is that what you see down in Atlanta? That's what yeah, I'm well, here. you know, I mean, porcelain grills are, they're big anywhere. Uh, I mean, they're, they're for the longest time. I mean, the green eggs were just taken off and everybody had an egg. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think they're great. I think they're great products. Um, they're very versatile. You can do a lot of wonderful things with them. Um, but I do, th- I do see it being more of a, it's more work. It's more of a learning curve of, you know, it takes time to get up to temperature. And, and like you said, in this day and time, people want to make it as easy as possible. So it's a, it's a lot. I mean, I, I cook chicken on a Rectech, a pellet grill mm-hmm. at competitions. And, you know, it's and I set the saw. I do a lot of different things on that because it's easy to it's easy to just set it and forget it. You know, I just go in there and I hit the button and it's at the temperature I want it to be at. Um, and I still get. Uh, I still get a good smoke ring. I still get the flavor. I still get everything I'm looking for. Oh yeah. Um, but I don't have to. I don't have to mess with uh, fire starters and everything else. So that's that's a that's a plus, if, especially if I'm already dealing with uh, um, another smoker that I'm having to watch the fire. One less fire to keep up with is a lot easier. So, um, but I, th- I don't know. I think. I think your, Traeger's done an amazing job. Traeger has really um, done a, a good job on the pellet market. I, 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 pretty much everybody I know that had a green egg is going to a pellet grill now, also, mm-hmm. um, which is strange to me. I mean, they're all, but well, I don't know. It's, I it's think not it's strange, strange to, to me. I just think I think people they uh, they they buy that egg because you can buy all the gizmos for it, and they get all mm-hmm. excited, and they're buying pizza racks, they're buying you know the the place setter, they're buying the extra rack on top. But it, it, the thing about a green egg is it does take talent. It takes, you know, 
talent to adjust that bottom that bottom window, uh, the daisy wheel on the top. It's it's not a um, it take it takes skill. If you can cook yeah. on, I've always told people if you can cook effectively on a green egg, you can walk up to a six foot um, six foot offset smoker, and you can get the temperature right because it works on the same principle. Yeah, and, um, and you know people don't believe me, but I said that you know the green egg's not the it, it's it's a great vessel, and, uh, and I don't want to sit there and make this a green egg conversation because I don't sell them, I don't really have an interest in them, but. The, the the what I'm, what our point is it's the the pellets are just so much easier and people are wanting the easy way out but I think if they step back a little bit and maybe look at an offset smoker um, a drum which takes a little bit more attention mm-hmm. um, th- you will cook better food the more attention you pay to that food you'll you'll get better food yeah I mean and and I know this is a little off topic but a lot of people I like in the competition world. Um, I know for me when I st- I used to when I first started I used to cook six butts, eight racks of ribs, and two briskets, mm-hmm. and twenty four chicken thighs for every competition I did, uh, just because I wanted to make sure I had plenty of meat. When I dropped down to cooking one brisket and three butts and four racks of ribs at a contest and and twelve chicken thighs, you got better, didn't you? I got a lot better yes, because sir. the focus is on Absolutely. that one meat. And, and when you're, and you hit the nail on the head right there earlier, it's all about focus. If you can focus on that product and focus on your process, you will become a better cook. Um, you just have to get your processes down and, and know what you're doing and have a game plan. And, you know, a lot of, um, time, a lot time of times to, to get better food, uh, what a lot of what a people don't understand or, or don't want to take the time, uh, the backyard cook. And I had a gentleman that came down from Madisonville. And we talked about that today. He, I, he bought some, I, I suggested that he use some injection in his pork, but he said he's never done that. I told him about the butcher's barbecue injection, how you can mix it with orange juice, apple juice, grape juice, whatever you want. You can use it straight and you'll get a, you'll get more, a more flavorful piece of meat if you use it, you use an injection with mm-hmm. it. And then he, he bought it and he said he's going to try it. And if and it doesn't, it, you know, the thing about having cooking, Good meat. You know, you take if you take a pork butt and don't put anything on it and put it on a smoker and, and cook it at 275 degrees, come back eight hours later and it's done, it's still going to taste good. You know what? I mean, it's it's going to be good. Yeah. But but you can go. You can do better than that. You can inject it, getting products from the Atlanta barbecue store that that enhance the the uh, the taste of that meat. And I think yeah. that's what. People like myself, like you, are trying to push. Sure, we want to make a living doing this, but it, it can be so much better, can it, Brian? Oh, for sure. For sure. I mean, there are so many different injections and brines and all that kind of stuff on the market. That I mean, it's just it, it, the possibilities are endless. Uh, butcher, butcher pork, they have the pork and they have the open pit. Uh, the open pit's going to give a little bit more kick to it. Mm-hmm. Um but but your but your plain butchers and your cosmos they're going to be pretty they're they're uh, porky whatever they're not going to add it's just going to be straight pork. Um, you can go with a Heath Riles or a or a um, Jim Elser's um, Sweet Smoke. You, they're going to be a little bit more they're going to be sweeter, um, you know. And then uh, there's so many different applications out there. Um, and, and I noticed you said uh, for butchers and this is for all of them. You can mix it with apple juice. You can mix it with water. You can mix it with a, a stock or whatever. Um, but you can also mix with pineapple juice or, or orange juice. The, the the thing that you want to know, like we had Jim on our show the other night, um, Jim Elser, mm-hmm. um, and the big thing he was talking about is like just know if you're going to use an acidic juice like a pineapple juice or an orange juice or any of the citrus stuff, you know you want to you want to inject it and put it right on the pit. Uh, yeah. You don't want to let it sit overnight, and and it's just the little things like that that um, that that you want to know um, before getting into it. Um, but for most part, if you just buy an injection and go off the off the label, it's going to be good. It's going to be better than what you normally do, and uh, and 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 like you said, it's going to be. If you cook anything, you take it right off this off the grill, off the smoker, 
and you eat it, it's going to be good. I don't care what you do to it. It's going to be good as long as you eat it right off the, um, yeah, right, off the right off the smoker. Yeah. You know, um, I noticed on your website, Brian, I, I, there's a section on there where you had some, um, uh, I know you had an interview with uh, Rod Gray on there. It mm -hmm. looked like it had some tips uh, for people cooking and things like that. And uh, I really thought that that was helpful that somebody, you know, that maybe just stumbling around. I know when I first started barbecuing, I was on, you know, that I, I couldn't get to enough websites looking and, right. and I confused myself. You know, you was like, oh, my gosh, you know, there's so much out there. But I like that little tip section that you had. Did, did you develop that and, and put that in there yourself? No, I didn't. That was on there. But we have taken that and, and, and expanded on it. So when I got the store, I wanted to do videos. Um, so we, we, when we first started, we used to do a lot of videos, product videos and, and cooking and stuff like that. And it came into, we were trying to do these Facebook live things. Um, and they were good, but it was taking too long. And I noticed that um, the products were, it, we weren't being able to do as good of a job as I wanted to. So Ellen decided, my wife decided we need to come up with a Tuesday tip. Um, so now every Tuesday we come up with Tuesday tips um, and, and we're getting some of our sponsor teams and, and Paul being one of them. Um, I know we talked about that earlier, uh, but that, that is where I, that is where our Sunday night conversation has come into, um, because of those tips, um, that tip section on our page. So we found out that a lot of people like that information. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was, and Ellen and I were talking about like, what can we do to make this better? Um, and we and we were doing some Facebook live something. I don't know what happened. We did a Sunday night chat, um, almost a year ago. We've been doing that almost a year now, and, and we had a great response. Um, so, ever since then, we've been doing a Sunday night chat, and we try our best to go over products. We try to go over um, sponsor teams and and competition, and and it's it's really expanded our reach, um, and, and people. Elle and I, every time we get done, we're like, what did we talk about that people want to hear? Uh, but every time we go to a competition or anywhere we go, somebody's saying, hey, thank you for doing that. Thank you for doing this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and we realize that it's not much, but we want to be able to give back to barbecue in any way possible. Um, so that's what we feel like our Sunday night show has been, is just a way for our customers to come on and voice their concern, voice their opinion. Um, it's a lot of back and forth that we do. Um, and anybody can get on there and ask us a question. I, mean, that's, I keep looking at my phone. I'm so used to doing this, looking for comments and, and somebody <laughs> asking me something. Um, but, that, and that's one reason, I mean, we still are doing some videos and my big thing, you asked earlier, what can I do as an online store to help the backyard guy? Well, my goal um, is I want to have videos. I want to have trimming videos. I want to show people how to trim, trim thighs, trim legs. Um, what to do with uh, ribs, how do you trim a pork butt? There's different ways of pork, trimming pork butts and what kind of meats are you trying to get? Um, most people don't even know what a tube is when it comes to uh, breaking down a, a, money, a, a pork butt. Mm -hmm. um, they don't even know what the tubes do and the horn muscle and you know the money muscle. Yeah. Um, that, what I, what I, and you bring up a good point. That's why I try to, um, I've, I've done pork butts at the store before and taken them inside and I've actually, you know, I don't say dissect them, but instead of, you know, most people just, you know, they start pulling them with their hands or they dump them in a bucket and hit them with the shredder and they, they don't take time to look at it. And uh, if you if you if you take the time to explain to somebody the different parts of the, of the pork butt, um, you know, they'll dig around, and they'll find those tubes, you, mm -hmm. know, you know, and they'll find that little bit of bacon tasting stuff that's on the uh, back of that thing under the fat cap. And they'll, you know, they'll look for that uh, money muscle, that tender, that loin area of the, uh, of the pork butt. You know, uh, you know, you bring up a good point. A pork butt is a, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a really a fascinating piece of meat with all the different muscles and all the different tenderness parts of it. I'll say the way I describe it, I'll say, you know, sometimes when you're eating a, a pork sandwich, you bite into it and then you just get one bite that's like, wow, why can't the whole sandwich be like that and i say well that's when you hit the loin or that's when you hit the uh mm -hmm. the little bit of that bacon that's on the uh, back of it um and i said take the time to go through it pull out the good stuff and you know set it aside and then just pull the rest of it 
Yeah. And then you make your sandwiches out of that and, and give the other stuff, you know, to your favorite guests and customers. Yeah, there you go. I don't know if you uh, follow <clears throat> um, Swine Life. Mark Williams, him and his wife do a, they do a video every week and their video this week was a pork, a pork butt and they broke down, you know, they were showing, they're breaking it down. They, it was a whole lot of stuff, but they're breaking down the money muscle, the tubes, the horn and, and pulling off some of the bark and the fat cap and everything else. And it was really interesting. So if you haven't seen that, go watch that uh, Swine Life uh, barbecue. You know, our, um, our, our, our the person we were talking about, David Bosco, one of his more hmm. famous barbecue pit master appearances, he dug into that pork, uh, that one pork butt. And remember, he pulled out that little roast that was in there. Yeah. That um, that he that he knows so much about, and 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 slice that up along with the money muscle and put it in a box in one. And yeah. so it's, um, you know, there's little parts in there that, um, you know, the competition people know about these things, but the backyard person can learn about them and, um, and use it to their advantage while they're serving their guests. You know, you can up your, you know, up your game a little bit. And it's, yeah. it's a lot more fun than just throwing the butt on the counter, pulling it and giving it. And everybody goes, Oh, this is great. Is they're eating your free food? You show a little <laughs> knowledge, you know? Um, yeah. It, it it makes it more fun. Um, Paul Keltner, he was, I don't know if he's still on or not. Um, Rooters and Tutors. I was, I was, I, I was uh, talking about Paul uh, last night. He was, he was nice enough to meet a friend of mine, Brian, over in Nashville last weekend. Uh, didn't know the guy, my buddy Ken Smith from Nashville, who came down, bought a pit barrel cooker from us and comes down occasionally when he's this way. He called me, wanted to know about a, um, if we, if I knew any, uh, teams up there that I could hook him up with. And I called Scott Smith down in Ackworth and he said, call Paul Keltner of Rooters and Tutors. And I did. And uh, what a nice fella. He didn't know me from Adam, Brian, but he invited, he said, you tell, you tell this fella to come and uh, he'll give him the nickel tour. And he did. And I was really appreciative of that. It was a, it was a real, it was a real kind gesture. And um, I think they're even going to try to hook up at the Jack this year. Oh, good. Which would be, yeah, Paul and Lynn are amazing. They're, they're, they're great people. Um, they're one of our sponsor teams. We're really proud of them. Um, they're number two in ribs right now in KCBS. Um, but they, yeah, they're just, we got to know them, Robert and Lex, they introduced us to them and, and they're just great people. Um, we try and get Lynn in our, in our, uh, in our trailer every time to help with our uh, boxes because every time they we have anything to do with them we we seem to have good luck when they're around so um they're they're really good people and a lot of fun to hang out with um but yeah paul paul and both they'll do anything for you i mean they're just they're just great people um and that's what we try and do we try and go out and and associate ourselves with some of the best people in barbecue um i'm so proud of our team list our uh, our list of uh, barbecue teams that we have i mean have all, you got it, all these guys. Have you got it great. there handy? I, I can, can well, you do it off the top of your head. I, I can. I'll. I'll do my best. I'm yeah. sure I'll miss. And if one you leave two, somebody but, out, don't be. Don't be slighted because. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard. Though. And 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 Tennessee, we've got Rooters and Tutors. We've got Contagious Q. We've got Jackie Price with Moke on this. Um, Alabama, we've got Smoke uh, Smoke Me Silly, and then we got Sweet Cheeks Barbecue. They're a backyard barbecue team in Alabama, doing amazing. Um, and then here in Georgia, we've got Hold Your Horses, Pots, Yes Deer, um, <clears throat> doing, and they're just all doing great things. Yes Deer, they've developed a line of sauces that is just out of this world, knocking out the park. I carry, I carry them at my store. That mustard sauce, yeah. is, that vinegar sauce, that yellow sauce is yeah. out of this world on chicken wings. Yeah, and then in, and <laughs> we've got we've we've got a good list um, out in North Carolina. We've got Smokehouse Mafia. We got Sauce Barbecue. We got Hickory. Uh, so we got, I mean, Noel, Noel did our, uh, our Tuesday tip this week on chicken. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's just, it's just a great group. Um, and then we've got Wes Garrett with Piglitically Incorrect out in Mississippi. Um, they're doing some good things for us too. So it's, but my whole thing is whenever I talk to any of these guys, I'm like, look, we want y'all to represent us. We're a family. We're a family owned business. We run our family. We run this store like a family and we want you to. Uh, act like, you know, oh, yeah. represent us well. And, and we are very proud of our, of our team list. I feel. Oh yeah. They got to act right. That's for sure. I mean, we, we've done a, I think we've got a good group of people out there doing a great things. Well, good for you. So we're really proud. If, um, everybody watch, if you're a backyard cook, don't, um, 
um, don't 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 stray away from these places like uh, the Atlanta Barbecue mm-hmm. Store that that um, you know they 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 sell to competition cook people because we, they know what they want. But you can um, you can contact Brian through the uh, website or his wife Ellen, and you can ask them questions on uh, how to uh, you know make better barbecue. Um, Brian, I mean, I see Nathan Dexter just jumped on. I mean. You talk about a guy that's, I mean, I mean, just an amazing cook, and I know, I know those guys are. Him and Ryan are both really nice guys. They're up in Indiana. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're ever up north, go in there and talk to those guys. I mean, I know they'll do anything to help you. Um, and I, you know, Matthew Walker, he was on our show the other day, and and one of his um, suggestions to new teams coming in is go talk to people. Go talk. Go talk to the best guys. I mean, if you see, if you're at, if you see Gray Street somewhere, go talk to Gray Street. If you see Boomerang, go talk to those guys. They're not. They're not going to turn you down. I mean, they're just good people. Um, and, and they, they started. Want to the, see they you started well. the same way you did. Scared right. to death. They started yeah. in the back of a pickup truck, scared to death. And uh, I guarantee you, the guys from Boomerang Barbecue were scared to talk to Darren Worth at one time, afraid he'd snap their head off. Right, and, uh, and now they're all good friends. Yeah, and they're all good buddies. And Darren Worth would never snap your head off. He's a great guy. The 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 you can't tell the difference between the guys, the the upper echelon guys, and and the lower echelon guys like me. They're all everybody all down the different levels of barbecue are, are nice, and uh, the, those top guys will help you. Um, I always I always use the example Donnie Bray, mm-hmm. uh, Warren County Pork Choppers. Um, I've seen him uh, literally give lessons at a at a comp. You know, helping people that they just they just don't mind doing that at all. All right, yeah. Uh, Atlanta Barbecue Store dot com for all your barbecue needs. Is that the correct address? Atlanta BBQ Store dot com. That's right. us. Um, and we've got anything. And if we don't have it, let us know. I mean, we're always here trying to add new products. New. We want to get the best stuff out there. If it's winning, we want to know about it. Um, and I'm telling you, if, if you want to if you want to up your competition game, um, watch the, on Monday nights. I mean, Al's Nest Barbecue Show is awesome. This is, I mean, you're going to get as much information on this show as possible, also. But if you have a chance on Monday nights, you're not doing anything Monday night. Um, jump on and listen to Robert. Robert, he's. I mean, the guy's got more information than anybody I know in barbecue, and he's out there every week. He's either bringing in the best guys in the country on our show. Or he's given out the most information that you could ask for. So, and if you're just um, and if you're just getting into it, you know, go online and watch these guys and ask them questions. Uh, they they yeah. monitor their Facebook feed. I try to monitor ours, but it's hard. They're a one man band. But uh, you know, they'll take they'll take your questions and they'll you know they'll turn it around because you know not all backyard. You don't want your backyard food to taste like competition barbecue because you can only taste one or two bites before you go into that diabetic shock. That's right. I love I love talking to backyard yes. guys because um, that's the future of barbecue. Um, they're the guys that oh, are I coming agree. up and getting better. I, I agree 100. percent Brian, thank you so much. What a what a great guy you are, and um, I look forward to getting you on again sometime. And no uh, we'll have a big time. And um, Atlanta Barbecue Store dot com uh, for all your online barbecue needs. Do not hesitate to contact them. And contact Brian, and just like I did, it's easy to get a hold of. Just go to his website. Brian, thank you so much. Thank you, Steve. You have a great night. We appreciate you it too. very much. What a great Ooh. fellow, Brian Jarvis. Hang on just one second. I'm going to – we're going to do something neat. Don't go away. I got a bonus. I got a bonus for you here just a second. I got a bonus thing for you. Hold on just a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. We're coming. We're coming back. We're coming back. We're coming back. We're coming back. Okay. I've got a bonus. I've got a bonus thing. We did a, uh, 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 you've heard of the um, impossible Whopper, this fake meat that's out there. I call it fake meat. Um, it's, it's going crazy. Uh, <laughs> all their stocks are just, are, are, are insane, uh, based on the number of how the length of they've been out there. They're, they, they talk about them all the time on CNBC and so. It's becoming quite an investment tool, um, not alone a, uh, a thing people eat. It's plant-based meat. And um, let's see, I've got to, 
We did a taste test at the <laughs> at my service station this afternoon with the the guys, and uh, I want to play that for you. And I got to do something. I got to make sure. I got to I got to change some. I got to change some uh, microphone settings around. But don't don't go away. You'll you'll want to see this. Uh, Brian's hanging there. Joe, Jeff, hang in there. You're gonna you're gonna like this, Jeff Maxwell. You're gonna really like this a lot. I gotta just do a couple changes here. Research kitchen. Here's my crack research staff. It also doubles the mechanical staff. Hey, Steve Ray's midnight oil. Okay, guys, sample what you have in your hands. And tell me what you think. Wes, first, what do you think? Sorry. If somebody told you that wasn't meat, would you believe them? Harrison, if somebody told you that wasn't meat, would you believe it? I wouldn't believe it. Do you think it tastes like meat? It's good. Jimmy, what do you think? It tastes like meat. Tastes like meat to you? That is the Impossible Burger from Burger King. It is 100% plant-based. Thumbs up or thumbs down? Real quick. Thumbs up. Thumbs up? Yeah. Thumbs up. Did you say up or down, Wes? Thumbs up. There you go. Yes, the crack staff house is barbecue. All right, there you go. The crack staff at the Midnight Oil and Al's Nest Barbecue. Just for you, the, the Burger King Impossible Burger Challenge. And I did the challenge as well and posted it on Instagram. If you want to go to our Instagram, Al's Nest Barbecue Instagram account, and see it. Um, it's it looks, if, it looks just like a real burger. I'm not kidding. I mean, it looks... The texture in the bun looks just like a real burger. Now, I ordered mine with just cheese, mustard, and ketchup because I wanted to really, I wanted to get a taste of this meat on what it would, what it really tasted like. And uh, I'll say this, it's not as good as a Whopper. And I'm a Whopper, I'm a Whopper fan. I'm a Burger King burger fan. If I'm going to have to eat, if I'm going to have to eat fast food, I don't like to, but if I have to, I will, I would prefer Burger King over, over any other thing. And especially the Whopper. Uh, it didn't taste as good as a Whopper. Don't, don't think that it does. It doesn't. But you know what? It didn't suck either. And, and there, there's, the, there's the quandary. Um, I don't know if vegetarians, I, I don't know if they're going to eat this and want, because they want the taste of burger. I, I don't know. I just, I just don't know. But it's not half bad. And if you got that burger dressed out, like I regularly would get it with uh Mustard, ketchup, uh, cheese, mayonnaise, lettuce, tomato, maybe even a double meat one. I think it was five nineteen for the what I got, uh, five nineteen piece, which is a little pricey for a fast food burger, but that's all right. I, I, we did it for an experiment, so we'll have to write that off. I, I don't, it's not terrible. It's not terrible. And I think if you got it dressed out, you'd be okay. Yeah, I think it would be tasty enough. I think I think like, somebody could slide it in on you, and you would eat it and say, "Oh, that's not bad." And you would not know that it wasn't meat. I will say that you would not know that it was not a meat product, that it was that it was a plant product. As far as how good it is for you, I don't I don't know. I don't think it's healthy. I don't think it's a healthy substitute for meat. I really don't. But um, it's not bad. It's uh, unusual and it's a uh, trendy, and uh, but that's okay. That's okay. So uh, I'm going to give it a thumbs up. If you're a vegetarian and you still and you crave the burger taste, like my daughter and son-in-law, vegetarians, but they might crave that meat taste every now and then, go for the Impossible Whopper. I think you like it. Everybody, thank you for watching and thank you for listening. Thank you, Brian Jarvis. What a great guest! A lot of fun we had with Brian. Uh, next week, next week got a big show planned. Michael McDermott, one of the premier barbecue marketers in the United States will be joining us next Wednesday night. 
live here on the Al's Nest Barbecue Show. So we're looking forward to seeing Michael and looking forward to seeing everybody next week right here on the Al's Nest Barbecue Show. See you next Wednesday.